Hi, welcome to a video episode of Extreme Narcissism TV. I just get right into it. Uh, this is about uh, David Lynch's Twin Peaks Return. And I put the title of the book, The uh, Final Dossier. Why I said that is because I would say The Final Dossier is uh, a Mark Frost thing. And Twin Peaks Return is David Lynch doing whatever he wanted. But one of the things I don't hear, I haven't really seen in other, other YouTubes to the degree that I want to discuss it here is how Twin Peaks, it's interesting to me, why, why, why waste time making a video about a TV show and not just make your own show? Well, because there's so much Aleister Crowley in Twin Peaks Return directly related to science of today and it's in the news as of the time of recording this now more than ever. Uh, there was 30, 36,000 uh, Nazi scientists after World War II that were allowed to work for the United States. And a lot of those guys helped develop the foundations of all the sciences and stuff you know, that we have today. Weapons, military, and, and all kinds of stuff. Because they had actually had the background in it by doing horrible things to people for real in World War II. How does this relate to Twin Peaks? Because Twin Peaks, in episode, Twin Peaks Return rather, and episode 8 does a very clear, transparent, here's the atomic testing. How does that relate to Twin Peaks and entities and beings from other dimensions and Aleister Crowley and Bruce Dern, which is Laura Dern's dad, and Bruce Dern's book that he wrote about traveling through a vortex, a time tunnel that was a vortex, and he wrote a book about it. And, and, and how he lived through it and like this is in a Bermuda Triangle or something like that. So it all relates to those vortexes, I think, those vortexes in the sky that Agent Cole looks to, looks into and how there's stuff from other dimensions. But uh, right now I'm just telling you a big mess in a soup, where to begin. Let's go back and this is about Twin Peaks of Return. Well here's some simple stuff right up front. You got Francis Bacon is a big influence on Twin Peaks Return. You got, um, what is his name, Francis Birkeland? No, Kristen Birkeland, Kristen Birkeland, who created the Birkeland box. That's important. Francis Bacon is important. There's these paintings of Man in a Box by Francis Bacon. It's the box that Agent Cooper's in. I mean, in fact, there's a series of these paintings which I think are self-portraits of Bacon. And he, it's a guy in a suit, and it's like, oh, that's where he gets inspiration from Agent Cooper. There's a bunch of other paintings which are clearly symbols. The, the, the man from another place uh, who then becomes in Twin Peaks Return the Arm is from a, a specific Francis Bacon painting. And he's even in a weird room, a Masonic room. And you can see that a lot of Lynch's visual inspiration comes from Francis Bacon. And Lynch will tell you that. But if you do a Google image search of Twin Peaks Francis Bacon, you're going to get the mother load. You're also going to get the painting that was the inspiration for the mother. Again, the mother is inside one of these boxes, but the, the, the figure of the mother is inside of this like green box, as opposed to the other Francis Bacon paintings, which have a, a, a man, which is usually Bacon, I think, inside of a box. He does, Bacon does these weird blurring and swirls of faces, and, and they're like weird portraits that are twisted portraits that look like twisted flesh. Well, that's what happens to those two kids who are in front of the big Birkeland box. What are you talking about? No, the two kids who are in front of the big glass box in New York, remember the, the one kid's trying to guard it? And then that the tall girl comes in, and next thing you know they're doing some Crowley and sex magic, which I'll, again, I'll come back to that too. And then the mother shows up in the box. All that stuff's inspired by Francis Bacon, right down to the part where they perform a sex magic ritual, and then the mother becomes like, uh, that kind of brings her here. That's a sex magic ritual to have, have her to be able to burst the bonds and break the box, which leads me to think that the girl was sent there deliberately to, to do so that the guy at some point, so it would open a portal that would allow that, that mother, that, you know, destroyer being to come through to our world. And when it eats those kids' faces off to get to the damn point already, uh, their faces look like a Francis Bacon painting. And it happens again when other people get eaten or disturbed by those the, the, the woodsmen. They wind up um, with a like baconized head, you know, like, uh, which interesting does look like maybe twisted up bacon. <laughs> but that's not intent. I mean, but anyway, um, so anyway, 
Sex Magic, Aleister Crowley, How's It Relate to Twin Peaks. All of David Lynch's stuff is about Hollywood and the occult and like the sexual ritual abuse of women and sex trafficking, how it chews up girls and spits them out and deals and possession by uh, entities and other beings. And that goes back to our actual history. The atomic testing was a big part. There's so many things I could say. I'm like, where do I start? The atomic testing. Why was that such a big part of episode eight? Because Jack Parsons, the guy who was the founder of NASA, was an Aleister Crowley Thelemite. When they did the atomic testing, they were. This is real. This is verifiable. Go look it up on whatever search engine you want. It's not hidden. I think Jack Parsons also the founder of NASA, the guy who was responsible for the first atomic testings and, and so on and so forth. Go look up Jack Parsons. Was friends with L. Ron Hubbard. They knew each other because they were both devotees of Aleister Crowley and his beliefs uh, when they were young guys. And then, um, you know, they got these huge positions. Well, I mean, you know, um, you know what Hubbard did. He started a Scientology. But they all studied under Aleister Crowley. And... Uh, Aleister Crowley and Elwin Hubbard would do rituals to Pan. They would do rit a whole bunch. They did rituals to the Scarlet Woman, which may be referred to sort of indirectly as that character of the mother. And But they would do these rituals to open portals to other dimensions. A huge thing about Aleister Crowley and what he was all about was about opening portals to other dimensions. So, back to the atomic testing. This is all related. When they did the first atomic testing, they actually were, just as Jack Parsons was doing rituals to invoke Pan. He said something about Shiva. And you can, you can, this is all verifiable more clearly than my brain is pulling out. But I assure you, they really were. They were doing these occult rituals to open portals to other dimensions because Aleister Crowley was obsessed with it. All the stuff he was creating was because he wanted to be best friends with Lucifer. He thought you could hang with the Prince of Lies as in his mind. Religion had failed him. He was a rich kid. He was apparently abused horribly. And then when he grew up and he discovered this was a time that they were discovering religions from the East. There was more trade, was more open than ever. So when Crowley was young, he would have had, you know, access to translations of things and all that stuff. So that was just in the air of the culture of the time. And um, so then um, Crowley's big thing, he wanted to open up portals to communicate with beings and entities to other dimensions to the point where he did where he communicated with this being called lamb on the regular i'm not saying this is true i'm just saying this stuff alistair crowley believed so compare all these things i've said to you already to the fabric of twin peaks so you have episode eight where the atomic testing happens and you see the actual birthing from this opening of a portal through the atomic testing into our world of this egg and the bob thing and the slime that comes from the mother, which is maybe a representation of the Scarlet Mother, which again was something that Jack Parsons, the founder of NASA, and L. Ron Hubbard did rituals, which involved sex magic rituals, because Crowley was all about sex stuff, and it's a thread all throughout David Lynch's stuff. In fact, David Lynch uh, m did sex magic... Uh, oh boy, with all the sex scandal stuff, this isn't a good thing to say now. But David Lynch, allegedly because Naomi Watts said so, forced her to masturbate on the set of a Mulholland Drive six, at least six times because there's a lot of masturbation scenes in that. That's one of those movies you watch once or twice and then you don't, it's like, I don't want to, I don't, you don't sit down with a hot cup of cocoa and watch Mulholland Drive and watch some girl get, you know, or Inland Empire. But anyway, to stay on point, I, yeah, she actually masturbated on screen, so watch that movie. She, he made her do it and she said she was humiliated and he made her do it and kind of bullied her into it and stuff like that and this is inside the actor's studio she said that so when i heard that that had happened and seen the thing it's um it's disturbing because because if that's true and not some kind of weird joke between them but if that's true that's sex magic now you know david lynch knows about sex magic be because of twin peaks the old stuff and every movie ever made his obsession with Kubrick, his involvement of always having some kind of element of the occult. This is David Lynch. And always the stuff with the abuse of young girls. Now, I don't know where David Lynch stands, what kind of guy he is. Whether I'm not saying anything about his character or not. But, you know, a lot of stuff is... He does a lot of stuff to girls in the movies. Like, you see it, they show it. So I don't know if he gets off on his photography. But let's stick with... Uh, 
with, with Twin Peaks in World War II. So, um, Alistair Crowley grew up and infiltrated like all these different organizations. He he was known to work for the, I don't know, what is it, the, like Secret Service of the UK or whatever, worked, worked for the UK intelligence, whatever they called that back then when he was alive. So he would, because because he was in a position to meet all these different groups and stuff and have influence on them. So there was some people that say he influenced a lot of groups and broke them up. So he just became a very manipulative guy. So a lot of people followed him. A lot of people that followed him were people that were scientists who had religion, whatever the religion was you know, given to them by their culture. They now had the opportunity to reject those things and discoveries in science would show results so they wanted so they were interested in Crowley and the things that different you know just again interest in other cultures other religions was being available so people were rejecting the things that didn't work from their own cultures and saying well it'll be better if I just try on new hats from different cultures so this is all related to Twin Peaks return I assure you so Crowley had a big influence on the early developing Nazi party and I'll prove this too it goes to cinema history again Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark the only reason that movie exists is because the Nazis during World War II were looking for actual occult objects which they you know objects of power to them so they wanted to find the Ark of the Covenant they wanted to find Lance, Lance of Longinus that speared Jesus and all the, they were looking for all kinds of things like weapons because the Ark of the Covenant was perceived by people to be like this weapon, like a you know weapon of mass destruction. So then the, the Nazi Party was the Nazis, N-A-T-Z-I, get it? No, the Nazi Party were trying to get these things for real. So again, like I may have said earlier, after World War II, it was like thirty-six thousand, you know, and plus became the scientists that developed the technologies that the world uses today. You know, the, 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 the U.S. government, Uncle Sam, said, okay, let's keep your work going. And that's what happened. So, that brings us to sort of the science. science so, they wanted to, so these people were, okay, a lot of them, the Nazis, were occultists, all right? They were super science-y nerds that religion had failed. So, now they wanted to open portals to other dimensions because Aleister Crowley said they did huge and I always forget this guy's name and I'm forgetting it again I think his name was with an L but I forget his name the guy that was really important in the development of the picture tube the only reason he was inventing the picture tube was because he wanted to create a portal uh, like a, you know like through the picture tube between our dimension and other dimensions this relates to Twin Peaks because when they're making the soul which is a gold ball which is a gold ball a gold ball from a Birkeland box Remember when you're in that like black and white gray zone, and then they, uh, the the fireman creates Laura Palmer's gold soul ball and sends it through the TV screen. That's Crowley again, because one of Crow one of Crowley's thelemites, which was Crowley's religion that he made up, uh, was about bringing entities from another dimension here. Because Crowley said he spoke to another being from another dimension called Lamb, that was his advisor and stuff. When when the fireman is sending uh, Laura Palmer's soul through that TV screen, it's supposed to be like the TV as a portal. So it's probably why that is used as an imagery. A common theme th all throughout Twin Peaks is electricity. Then there's the, 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 the atomic testing, the radio broadcast. Electricity is a conduit which now will lead me into another strong thread of Twin Peaks, which is uh, Kirsten Birkeland and his Birkeland boxes, which leads to CERN, which leads to, again, portals to other dimensions. But I, I got to remember about I said about Bruce Dern. Did I tell you the whole thing? Yeah, I did. Uh, David Lynch has a nickname for Laura Dern because he's just like one of his muses. He calls her Tidbit. So, Laura Dern, Bruce Dern, the whole connection. So, we know that Lynch knows about the portal things. He uses the portals and the vortices, but that's not the only place portals and vortices are used. We know about the Norway spirals, the Russia spirals, all, was there one in Belgium? All over the place. And they say it, it coincides with these Hadron Colliders, but the history of the Hadron Collider and electricity in Twin Peaks, we'll start with the electricity in Twin Peaks. 
Okay, so there's a thing called the Birkeland current, which comes from the Birkeland box. But first, the Birkeland current is a spiraled electricity current. And um, it's important to the development of CERN and Hadron Collider, which uh, in public statements from CERN themselves, they say, oh, we may have opened like a portal to another dimension. And, and in another statement say, and something may have came through. Maybe it was the same statement. There's a couple of freaky statements from them. And then they talk about strange lists. I don't want to get into that stuff. But then, but then, um, so let me go back. So there's the Birkeland current, which is a spiral current, which is an electrical current specifically. And you know how the rate, the people listen to the radio, the, the, the woodsman invades the radio station and it puts them, it puts, um, the people to sleep okay now I don't know how many woodsmen there are but at times I thought that they said there were eight or at times they said there were so many woodsmen that like they were just multiple like there were just so many of them but I didn't know if there were so many of them there was a specific number there may be a specific number of woodsmen because of CERN but first I got to go back to Birkeland current I just want to touch on these chords so that not only do I remember to come back to him, so that so that, you, so that I say like, hey, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, as it relates to what David Lynch did with season season three of Twin Peaks. Because again, like I said before, I think Mark Frost, uh, he had the book. That's all his. The show, that's a collaboration. But Lynch is a director. He got his way. So, okay. So Kirsten Birkeland was obsessed with the Aurora, Aurora Borealis. And there's photographs of him. Do um, a Google image search of Birkeland box, Kristen Birkeland, and uh, that's B I R K E L A N D, Kristen Birkeland. And with his Birkeland box, it's the same glass box on a larger scale. Like it's the same glass box, like you see in uh, Twin Peaks Return that uh, Coop shows up in and the mother breaks through in that is again a very expensive machine built up really high in New York and it costs like was it was it millions of dollars or, or billions of dollars or something like that like who could pay for this yeah that's exact that's related to CERN which is the future but to get to CERN we have to start we have to stay with the Birkeland box and I have to keep my mind there so the Birkeland <laughs> So do look at the Birkeland box and go, oh, that's the glass box. But it also looks like the Francis Bacon box. So I think it's those two things merged. Now, if you look at what's inside the Birkeland box, it's a little shiny metal ball. Those are your souls. Those are your topo souls. It's all, I think it's all uh, inspiration for Lynch. And um, so what the, what the Birkeland box did was it would spin around. He was obsessed with recreating the Aurora Borealis. And he had a very weird thing he wanted to do that is still related. I'm getting a little bit dried mouth. Uh, there's, he had a weird thing he wanted to do, which was very specific. Now, this guy's a scientist, and he did manage to create like a sort of Aurora Borealis. You can go on YouTube and see people's recreations, modern day of Brooklyn boxes, and it's kind of a neat thing. And it's a metal ball, and I don't know how, how it works. But anyway, what Brooklyn had wanted to do way back in the olden days was create this sort of amphitheater built inside a mountain like dug inside the mountain then you would go inside the mountain like the caves of Plato or something like that I'm not even sure and then what you would see in there and this is like early 1900s which is bizarre that he would say this considering modern day CERN which we'll get to Hadron Collider was you would, and it's also related to Twin Peaks was this theater you go inside and you would watch recreations of how the universe was created and stuff like that and the Aurora Borealis and other celestial phenomenon. And I think about the Hadron Collider, which again, very specific, which exists now in um, Geneva, or is it Gustad? Geneva, Geneva, Switzerland. And it's built like they spent like 17 years digging down and this will tie into the woodsman and that's how we'll get into CERN. So for like 17 years, they were digging into the mountains, like the Birkeland box, uh, into the mountains of CERN, I mean, <laughs> into the mountains of Switzerland, 
like 17 year project digging 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 down into into the mountain to build this hadron collider this hadron collider had to be a fastened to the earth why like is it going to float away or i don't understand like why do they have to make it like bolted into the earth or like fixed into the rock like it's not just there like oh we dug down and we're going to build this on top of there it's like harnessed it's like bolted down to the it, it's built into the mountain and then it's bolted to the earth for some reason i don't know why but every time they fire this hadron collider up the scientific community wants to stop it they tried to sue cern the, 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 and they found out that they're sort of sovereign in the world like oh you can't really sue them there's like a legal loophole where like nobody can attack them and they get like infinite amount of funding and like of course you know where some of their funding comes from but it's really like they have like infinite funding which kind of is what you get which is what is shown and hinted at with that box again like a Birkeland box like a Francis Bacon box it's a portal to another dimension which in the public statements of CERN, they themselves said that they're doing portal-like things. <laughs> That's their statements. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is the people that did the thing. They made the thing. This is their statements. We, go ahead and say this. And they said, yeah, we may have opened a portal to other dimension and stuff may have come through. It sounds like the mist uh, more than, uh, but it's in Twin Peaks. But the thing is they have so much money, right? this real life hadron collider they're kind of sovereign to like beholden to no one you can't sue them and you can't shut them down they fired this thing up a bunch of times now russia and china want to build one and in new york in twin peaks the return you have a portal to another dimension that they're like oh we don't know who paid for this and then i i was assuming when i watched it that it was bob but now when i think about all the hadron collider stuff and i saw the gothard tunnel opening video hey if you like David Lynch and Twin Peaks, go watch the inside and outside Gothard Tunnel opening ceremony. That's the CERN Hadron Collider's opening. These are like, this is a ceremony that was done for the wealth. This is for real life. This is still related to Twin Peaks. There's a ceremony that was done for the wealthy elite. Again, in Switzerland. And it is, it's going to make you not sleep right. Because it makes you recognize, again, like David Lynch says in Twin Peaks, that the people who are scientists, the people who are in the government, the FBI, are into the occult. They know about, or they believe, whether it's true or not, they believe in the occult. In real life, David Lynch is saying that the occult and the sciences have been merged since like World War II, because all those World War II scientists used to be Aleister Crowley Tholomites, and their whole thing, their whole goal of their religion was to open portals to other dimensions and bring shit here. And Twin Peaks Return talks about time skips and all these other things. And when anybody ever talks about CERN and the Hadron Collider that's in the actual real world, they talk about the Mandela effect. They, 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 they even the, the people in the CERN videos themselves. The one guy's holding up a thing that says, you know, uh, he's holding up a thing about the Mandela effect in his cards, like something about the Bond and Mandela and the first. James Bond's last name was Nelson or something like that. So Nelson Mandela, Mandela effect. And CERN's like, ha ha ha, we're doing them. They even joke about it. Okay, I cut out there for a minute. Um, but anyway, same video. I'm just going to keep going. So uh, I'll keep on track. So anyway, when they were digging... So go watch the Gothard or don't watch it. There's your scary Halloween video. But anyway, Lynch didn't know about that. Th that that ceremony hadn't happened first. But anyway, what happens in the video is a complete narration of the building of CERN and what they do, and they talk about affecting time. And it should be interesting to David Lynch, considering he made Twin Peaks Return, and then just like 2016 or 2017 is when they, that tunnel opening video went up on YouTube. And if you compare that with Twin Peaks, the outside part, with what happens in Twin Peaks, the return, it's so strange. It's about like weird time things. So that's creepy. If you want to get conspiracy theory there, there's your thread. Gothard Tunnel opening, a ceremony, and the entirety of Twin Peaks a return. There's so many things I could touch on. Um, but, but what else? Um, oh, the, the Woodsman. So this may be a stretch, but maybe not. In the Gothard Tunnel opening ceremony video, you get to see the deaths of the miners that died excavating and digging to create this thing and then you get to see their souls rising and stuff like that I was wondering 
that if this, if if Lynch was hinting, he was like sort of retconning the woodsmen, those black oily painted guys. Uh, if he was like retconning them and making them as like, hey, when this portal was opened, like remember the log lady's husband died? Maybe that was some kind of other portal opening. Oh my God, I even talk about all that stuff. I probably won't even get to that in this video and I probably won't even touch on it. But all the stuff about Twin Peaks and the place between the two peaks and portals being opened, it's all still relatable to CERN. The vortice is in the sky. But anyway, let me get back to the woodsman. I think the woodsman could be potentially Lynch retconning the people that died in CERN because I think it was like nine people that died, like nine miners that died. Uh, in the excavation of building that and and maybe that's somehow a thread to Twin Peaks the return and the log lady's husband and maybe them being one of uh, the log lady's husband being one of uh, the woodsmen I don't know but uh, is electricity in the Birkeland box Did we cover all that CERN the modern day Hadron Collider yeah that's a lot of stuff. So I think with this Hadron Collider, again, I think I just nailed it there. That might be the end of it. Enough for this. Enough for anybody to just keep researching stuff on Twin Peaks. A oh, big Buddhist thread has always been something for David Lynch. He's interested in transcendental med meditation in a big bad way. There's a bunch of YouTube videos of him talking about it, giving lectures. Uh, he hangs out with John Hagelin, which is one of these weird. I mean, not weird, but like he's a physicist guy that seems like data from Star Trek. The way that he, the way that he talks is like this, and he's not like it's like strange guy. Very smart, a big time meditator, and the effects of meditation on collective, like how it affects people. David Lynch is interested in all that stuff, and um, in real life, and it makes me think of David Lynch in Twin Peaks and the FBI, and and this is conspiracy theory territory. But a lot of people link transcendental meditation movement they say that after the guy that founded it died which is the Maharishi whatever whatever um, they say that after that it was infiltrated by the CIA because they realized that meditation was useful for mind control and there's plenty of well-documented stuff that actually is real about horrible stuff that the US government did in the 1960s to develop all those fun drugs that everybody you know you know, LSD and acid and, and whatever the modern day equivalents, Molly and all these things other people take now. We're all basically maybe started out tested in children in World War II, but then we're definitely with photographic evidence and everything tested out in kids in the 1960s. It was really sick. So all your Stranger Things, Stranger Things, Alias, Fringe, all these things with the kids with powers is all because it's all based on actual torture experiments that were done in the 1960s on children. Um, well, you now know this is a spoiler for that book. If, and if you're not ever going to get that book, the Twin Peaks dossier, I recommend watching the YouTube <laughs> about it. But we know that what crawled, that, that moth, the uh, locust frog that crawls into the mouth of that little girl in black and white in a flashback that is Sarah Palmer so we know that how something evil got into her which relates to uh, Jow Day the spirit Jow Day and Judy and I think her middle name is Judith or something like like Sarah Judith Palmer and like oh Judy so it's like some kind of weird perhaps inherited infected legacy thing like it could have perhaps like infected a, a, a Leland Palmer you know, again, like transmission through sex magic and then he becomes corrupted and that leaves for him through Judy being possessed first, then Leland being taken over, perhaps. This is speculation now. This doesn't have anything to do with all the cool uh, science and Crowley stuff. Oh, David Bowie? But anyway, maybe it got into Leland. Like he got infected too through sex magic because it's a big part of Crowley. Everything about Alistair Crowley was two things. Sex. It was a sexually repressive time. Alistair Crowley was either homosexual or just became so degraded through just like trying every unspeakable act because he thought it would get him power, the power through systematic derangement of the senses and all that stuff or whatever. He just would, Alistair Crowley was making period blood muffins and eating poop and all these horrible things. And he talked to this being from another dimension called Lamb, which other people suspect that the man from another place, the evil little man, you know, that dances around, that becomes the tree with the water gum on it, the sycamore sapling with the water gum. 
the right arm, the reformed right arm or whatever, that some people speculate is lamb. And I think that, I think there's, could be strong evidence that there, that, that could be lamb because lamb was described as like, by Crowley's words, a dwarf or something, like a gray dwarf. And he did a drawing of him and it looks like a gray alien with a big head or whatever. But I think that was the first drawing. This is conspiracy theory again, first drawing. So is, is lamb this Alistair, this, this like, guy that Alistair Crowley talked to in his head or whatever from another dimension. Is that the man from another place in part yes? Is it the guy in the red suit from the Francis Bacon painting? In part yes. So there's a whole bunch of things there. Oh there was something. Oh David Bowie. David Bowie again. A huge Alistair Crowley influence. You can go back to the history, history of David Bowie's young guy and find out that he was first interested in Lord of the Rings and said, I'm all about Lord of the Rings. And then after he was interested in Lord of the Rings, he became interested in Aleister Crowley and all that stuff. And um, like big time, there's pictures of him wearing Crowley's, you know, pyramid helmet. And like a lot of people recreate that photo, but there's a young David Bowie doing that. He sings praises to Crowley and the, you know, the coming, the coming race and the, all of the Gordon, the, it's all in Hunky Dory. The whole album is full of like Crowley references and a new order of the Golden Dawn and we're the start of the coming race and all that Homo Superior and all this stuff, which is like basically the same stuff that, again, Nazism. And if you go back to early David Bowie, he starts with Crowley and then becomes interested in, in uh, Nazism so much that he goes on, go watch the YouTube. David Bowie goes on um, Dick Cavett, I think it is. And he's like, yeah, I got too involved with the the Nazi stuff and people started to worry about me I had to pull back also David Bowie was interested in the drugs of Crowley which was cocaine and I think that when you you look at the kind of drugs that Lynch has in his films uh, well you see what happens to Jerry Horn with marijuana but you also see like it's harder drugs that are the drugs that are with the people whose lives are messed up in Twin Peaks like uh, I can't remember like Amanda Seyfried and Stephen and um, in the, in the new one, and you get the idea that if Red, the Balthazar Getty, is a drug kingpin, then Shelley's still doing drugs too, probably. And then you got, um, what the hell's his name, Tommy, the police guy with the white hair, you know what I mean? You got him, who's uh, now a police officer, so the whole thing's a big mess. I think those are all, I'm kind of meandering, but they see they're all things, that threads of Twin Peaks. But anyway, David Bowie, in his music, I think he is portrayed in Twin Peaks Return as sort of a tragic figure because Gordon Cole says he kind of doesn't exist anymore. Towards the end of his life on David Bowie's last album, in his last video, not last video, but one of those last videos that came out, what, what is the Dark Star, the video for Dark Star, he talks about like reaching heights with magic and kind of failing and he's like, I don't really know what's next and it's all in the video and everything. He's like, here I am going into the great beyond like Major Tom, don't know what's up. You're gonna, I'm going to be revered when I'm gone, but really I don't even know what's up. I tried to reach the heights and failed. And David Bowie in the song Station to Station, years earlier, when he, he which the album he recorded, this is all related to Twin Peaks. It, it is. Uh, so on the album Station to Station, David Bowie has a song. It's not like a conspiracy theory, not, but it really is all Twin Peaks. I'm just trying to spit it out and get it, make this short. So anyway, David Bowie <laughs> was, on <coughs> was on Twin Peaks and uh, on his album Station to Station and on the song Station to Station, he, he records a song of trying to go to, from Kether to Malkuth, which is Places on a Tree to Life, which is like this sort of like he tried to get from, he tried to, to get from heaven no, he tried to get from earth to heaven, but like by skipping a step, which is going through this dark zone where nobody can help you, which Twin Peaks is all about, which is like these weird in-between zones. There's the Black Lodge, there's the White Lodge, there's the Mauve Sea, there's this gray zone. There's these other places like where he gets trapped with Naito and she, gets, she pulls the switch down and gets blown off the house and comes into our dimension. And there's the portals in Twin Peaks. So there's all these different, there's the vortices that show up in the sky, like the Bruce, Do Burn, Bruce Dern Bermuda Triangle, Agent Cole Vortis. So you see what I mean? Like there's all these different uh, weird zones. And it relates to David Bowie because he says in the song, Station to Station, of trying to go to, I, can't, I forget if it's Malkuth to Kether or Kether to Malkuth. I always reverse it. 
but it, but he's but anyway the point is it's on the tree of life even though you don't know what this means probably he's it's talking about skipping a step and that's that weird zone where you're not protected and David Lynch definitely talks about that and that is how Twin Peaks Return ends it's like saying like hey all this magic stuff is dangerous and portals to other dimensions is dangerous and don't mess with this stuff because you'll probably get lost Agent Cooper gets lost for 25 years. He comes out again, and as soon as he comes out again, what does he do? He goes right back into the soup with Laura Palmer, and then uh, then they're like, well, what happened? We don't know. Well, we know Laura Palmer disappeared, but we don't know where she is. Yeah, she's somewhere lost in the abyss, which is part of Tibetan stuff, which is part of what Agent Cooper was interested in, which was definitely a part of the threat of the first season of Twin Peaks. Remember when Agent Cooper's throwing rocks? That's when you're getting your introduction into Buddhist thinking of like, I'm gonna like close my eyes and point and whatever I land on will be a clue. That's a kind of magical, th that's magical thinking, magic with a K, that's Crowleyan thinking too, which is probably something he pulled from Buddhism, which is also something that Agent Cooper talks about. But you see how all this stuff, Crowley <coughs> is a huge part of the soup of Twin Peaks, but so is this Hadron Collider the CERN thing is definitely a huge part of, uh, well, I mean, maybe it's not a huge part, maybe that was an overstatement, but it's definitely a thread because it's about portals. And there's no denying, I mean, uh, Major Briggs was went through a portal and was hiding out in another dimension for however many years until he got his head separated, and now he's some weird disembodied giant head helper being in another dimension. So David Lynch, I think what he's trying to say is, through all of his stuff, one, if you're a young girl, don't go to Hollywood <laughs> because you're going to get spit out by porn and it'll, it'll not just spit out your porn, it'll just ruin your soul. You'll just be so um, like subjugated or you'll just be fucking a shell of yourself like uh, poor Naomi Watts or Laura Dern in their movies and then whatever happened to uh, in the one where OJ killed Roseanne Arquette. So you got that one too. And uh, Lost Highway. It, 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 you see how David Lynch's, all his stuff is like Kubrick's films. All Kubrick's films have like, here's this thing that Kubrick latches on. It has something to do with like sex trade stuff. And then David Lynch has a similar theme of that stuff. But David Lynch goes, well, I mean, you can argue Kubrick goes into the occult a lot too. There's so much on that. But that's people who do it better say it better than me. But I want to talk about the Lynch stuff. I don't hear him talking about. There's definitely a David Lynch, Crowley, and Portal stuff. He's definitely talking about that stuff and maybe because he knows Laura Dern probably no you know if he knows if he's friends with her then he knows her dad and everything and Bruce Dern I'm sure is sociable enough I don't know I'm trying to think of was Bruce Dern ever in a, in a in a David Lynch thing I don't think so I don't know I don't remember it but anyway what else is there to say about that characters with loose ends I think Audrey is lost in some other dimension that's just an opinion thing her with the mirror there's something about mirrors it, like she wasn't really in a real place when they showed her like ah what's going on she's sort of like in some kind of weird limbo -y thing or something probably because of them messing with time then there was the other parts in the episode where time would shift was that them setting things right then there was Sarah Palmer when things were I, 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 yeah I already did videos of how I thought it ended I'm not gonna get into that I just wanted to talk about the stuff I didn't hear in other people's YouTube videos which was the history of the Birkeland boxes Francis Bacon, it's known. Lynch is open about that. But if you do a Google image search or whatever image search you, you use, uh, Twin Peaks Bacon, you'll see a lot of other things. Maybe I didn't even mention at least a couple others I didn't mention that that was an influence on his artistic sensibilities. Um, there's other stuff I could have hit on, like some of the Masonic stuff, the statues in the Black Lodge timeline things. But anyway, that's it. It's, it's basically... I would say Twin Peaks Return in a weird way is sort of like very cautionary of like don't mess with stuff you don't understand because this thing goes on for infinite dimensions that you couldn't possibly understand like stay in Twin Peaks and don't do drugs because even though Twin Peaks is a nice place to live and people want to go there underneath the surface of it all the history of America is weird and occult because everything we have is built on well, electricity is a conduit of bringing stuff apparent. We're full of electricity. People liken us as a conduit. If you look in a legal dictionary, you're going to see that a conduit could be termed as us. Like, we're conduits. So, conduits for electricity, yes, because when we have life running through our bodies, there's electrical current. When we're dead, 
I don't know what that charge is. Maybe you can run a charge through a dead body. I'm not that, I don't remember. I don't know if I ever knew that. But anyway, um, electricity is a huge important part of Twin Peaks. And the Birkelin current is a vortical, this sort of spiraling kind of electrical current that is important to Hadron Collider in CERN. And I think there's a definite connection that David Lynch is aware of between portals to other dimension stuff, the occult, Aleister Crowley, CERN, and did I ever really wrap up David Bowie's tragic thing? Yeah, well here's what happens. David Bowie in real life admits in his songs as early in 1980, whatever at Station Station it came out, he admits, yeah, I tried to go too far too fast with the occult and I failed. I give he gave it he gave it up. Then he became a thin white duke and did all those eighties hits, let's dance and all that stuff, and became poppy and said, Let's forget about this. It was gonna be about the pretty things, all the plastic, and let's do that. And then, you know, tin machine and all that stuff, and then he just kinda had his life and enjoyed it. And at the end though, he does Dark Star and he says, Yeah, I don't know what happened. And then I think it's interesting because in Twin Peaks Return, we have Agent Philip Jeffries, who was David Bowie, as a fifth as a vapor in a tea kettle or something. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's like, yeah, life imitates art, imitates life or whatever with David Bowie. Not to be sad, but is David Lynch a nice guy? I hope so. I hope he didn't really make Naomi Watts do that. And I think that's about all I want to say about Twin Peaks anymore. But I highly recommend never watching that Gothard Tunnel opening video, but it really is, it really is. Uh, the outdoor one is really, I wonder what David, I want to hear David Lynch, what he thinks about that now that Twin Peaks Return is done. Does he have any connection to CERN? What does Jay Dyer's review think of Twin Peaks Return? Everybody's waiting for part two. All right, anyway, that's it.